Our next presentation deals with an exciting subject, virtual commerce. Our speaker is Diana Sheehan of In Context Solutions. Diana, the podium is yours. Thank you so much, John. Today we, we are going to talk about something that, that is incredibly interesting to In Context Solution as a, a virtual reality um, research provider, but also as a company who uses our platform to do in-store visualization and explore virtual shopping. One of the things that as an industry we saw is we saw significant growth in online sales uh, across channels as the U.S. and the globe moved into the global pandemic. That is something where we haven't actually seen a a change in, in where sales have gone, it, it, it's a trend that is here to stay. And when you think about the U.S. in particular, as you look at U.S. retail sales, we are at a point where across channels, whether it's grocery or it's apparel or it's consumer electronics, 21% of total sales are happening right now online, um, and 80% of sales are coming through stores. What we see in grocery is we see that the, pan the pandemic helped to really accelerate grocery sales moving online as a percent of total sales for the channel. Um, we've seen growth at 17% or higher, and we anticipate that growth to continue um, at that rate over the next five years, leading to a point where ultimately uh, around 20% of total grocery sales happen online. Now, the interesting part of that, though, is as you look at grocery shoppers, we have not actually seen that shoppers change and basically do one or the other. What we see, which is similar to what we see in other channels, is we see grocery shoppers spending a portion of their dollars in online grocery and the remaining dollars in store. So we still see significant traffic to the store for grocery sales, but ultimately what we see is this intersection that for grocery retailers today really does need to, um, they, they need to start to think about the intersection between what their shoppers experience in the physical store and how that translates to what shoppers experience online. As we know for today with online grocery, online grocery sales and that experience is very different from what we find in store. It's item-based. It's search-driven. And there is very little kind of true experience that shoppers can kind of lean into that resembles what they would find in the physical store experience. We see that kind of that's true across channels. But more importantly, as you look at grocery, 75, nearly 75% 75 of total grocery shoppers say that they are doing some of their shopping um, online, but also shopping in store. And, and so it becomes very important to make sure that that brand experience translates across. More importantly, what we see is that we see grocery shoppers say something is missing from their current e-commerce experience for online grocery, um, and that there are a number of different things that could be done to make that experience better. And, and of course, leading that charge is younger shoppers saying that they want more of an experiential opportunity to shop online versus what they have access to today. You can see as we sat and we asked shoppers what could make online shopping better, millennials leaned into some of these things that I think to, to the larger industry may feel a little bit far out, but we in, in, in context feel is right in line with what's coming next, particularly as kind of the larger world starts to really try to figure out the role of the metaverse and experiential shopping. What we see in this kind of slide is we really start to look at millennial shoppers saying they want to be able to kind of virtually shop. They want to shop something that looks like their store in a way that is, is familiar and is actually in something that and in their day-to-day -day lives they are engaging in, as you think of, of kind of different experiences they have, um, both for, for work, um, professionally, but also from the personal, personal side in, in ways that they experience um, kind of things that they're having fun with. 
So what does that all mean as far as kind of e-com versus virtual commerce? What that means is there is an opportunity to really rethink how, shop, how retailers engage shoppers in their online e-commerce experience. And so what we did to prove that as some of our research and development thought leadership is we actually created some kind of concept stores that could be virtually shopped online in the grocery space. And when we did that, we actually, working with an agency partner, um, Wild Blue, we kind of tested a couple of different ideas. Um, we tested a breakfast occasion store that had curated assortment across categories, so everything from bacon and eggs to cereal and Pop-Tarts to fruit. Um, but we did it in a shopping experience, in one shopping experience that, that really kind of looked like a very simple convenience store um, that had some featured products, but the same assortment. And then in another experience that really went outside the box and actually kind of provided an experience that almost felt like, like a farmer's like it, market on a sunny morning. Um, we then tested that same curated assortment in a kind of mocked up e-commerce shopping environment with a, a, our partner Skins. And so what that allowed us to do is really start to think through and understand attitudinally how, how are shoppers reacting to this type of curated experience um, and how is that different when they're given something much more experiential to shop in. And so what we found is, is we found at the core for those respondents that were tested being able to shop in the virtual experiences, they were, significant, they were significantly more likely to be very satisfied with that experience versus the curated assortment of that, that e-com breakfast store that we would kind of see today. But more importantly, what we saw is that people found those virtual experiences much more fun to shop. And we also found that the shoppers who shopped those stores believed that they bought more products than they would have in a typical e-commerce environment. What's increasingly more interesting, as you think of some of the challenges for grocery retailers today, um, is the shoppers who shopped the virtual breakfast store felt that they were more likely to browse items in the store than they would in a typical online shopping experience. So retailers today really are struggling with how do you get shoppers to find new items, to discover new items, to browse outside of their shopping list or the things that they buy every week. This virtual shopping experience Experience seems to provide an opportunity for shoppers to really kind of look around the way they might do in store in a way that they can't do with a standard item-based e-commerce experience. But what's really interesting is we also found a subset of shoppers who shopped the virtual breakfast stores that said they actually browsed more than they would in an in-store experience. And so what's interesting is you do start to see very cleanly that shoppers are kind of at a larger level less interested in browsing in the retail kind of access that they have today, whether it's in store or online. Virtual shopping creates an opportunity potentially for retailers to really engage shoppers in a new way and start to solve for some of those, uh, some of those kind of areas where e-commerce today doesn't really work well, like impulse shopping and things like that. What we also saw is when we actually asked the respondents in our survey if they had the chance to shop a virtual shopping experience, would they? And what they said overwhelmingly is that the majority of shoppers, regardless of age, would shop in a virtual store environment. Now, some would do that in addition to shopping kind of the standard online experience they have. Some might opt to shop more often virtually instead, but at the core, seven of 10 shoppers said they'd prefer to shop virtually one way or the other versus the current e-commerce experience. And when they shopped, the places and how they would shop would be potentially category specific 
or if sales or deals were offered. Um, what's interesting here is one of the things that they said is they'd shop this way when they have time. And what's, what's funny is a lot of times people shop online because they feel it is more convenient than shopping in the store. They feel that it saves time. But what we saw when we compared the amount of time it took for people to shop the e-commerce breakfast store compared to the amount of time it took for people to shop the virtual stores that we tested, they actually saved about 40% of time shopping virtually because they could find things faster and easier. So what we have is we have a circumstance in which people are spending less time in that e-commerce virtual shopping environment, but feeling like they are browsing more and finding more, which is kind of a positive positive for shoppers if you give them the right experience. And one of the things that becomes really interesting, and we do see this in the responses that we get, is what we're seeing here is shoppers aren't saying, I want to shop the digital twin of my local jewels down the road. What they're saying is, I'd be interested in a virtual shopping experience for a specific idea or occasion. Here it might be a category or it could be a, a virtual shop that highlights all of the items on deal um, for that retailer. Or it could be something like an experience that focuses on things that are outside of what goes into a weekly basket. So we tested a breakfast store with the idea of a meal occasion being a place to test this out. But where it could really work is actually in something different, something outside of the norm, the Super Bowl party that you're hosting at home, the holiday dinner that you are hosting for your family, creating virtual stores that actually make the time to shop and find what you need faster, but also find places for inspiration really becomes kind of the path forward in creating virtual shopping experiences. What we also did is we actually tried to kind of dig into, well, well how would this work, right? Because obviously it does not exist today in kind of the standard retail experience for online grocery. And what our, our, our respondents said is they said, that they would ha be interested in accessing something like this, either with the opportunity to opt in. So maybe it's a banner ad where when you search for turkey, when you're planning out your Thanksgiving dinner, a banner ad comes up with the items listed and says, would you like to shop our Thanksgiving store? And then when they shop the virtual Thanksgiving store, everything they need is one place in a really cool experiential space that includes video or the ability to link to things like recipes and things like that. So we saw that about of the people who were open to shopping, we found, found a fair amount were open to being kind of to opting in, but uh, more people actually said they were fine just being dropped in. So if I said I need turkey and I searched for turkey, I'm dropped into the Thanksgiving store automatically because it's very likely that the reason I searched turkey is because I'm shopping for my Thanksgiving meal. Um, and so what we see is that they are okay being able to kind of be told and directed into this versus having to opt in, but giving choices is always a good thing as well. I think what's more important, and as I kind of end this presentation, um, to understand is as we start to talk about this idea of virtual shopping, this is not about kind of the, the metaverse as it may become something where it's driven by every home having a VR headset. These virtual experiences are things that today in any home, any shopper could actually complete these just ordering out of their mobile app or ordering or kind of opening up the experience from the laptop that they're currently building their shopping list from. And I think that's actually one of the bigger things that we said is as we talk to people about how they might access a virtual shop, the bulk of shoppers said that as of right now, they, they'd access that through their laptop or, or PC at home. And then obviously you have mobile phone and tablets leading the way. We do not have to wait until VR headsets are ubiquity, ubiquitous. This really is something that retailers can start to make a move to and shoppers are ready for today. 
So with that kind of said, I'll kind of conclude very quickly. We just got the, the results of this uh, study back in the last week and a half. We are just starting to dig through the data. This is kind of a sneak peek of what's coming, but soon we're going to be coming out with behavioral data. How, how did they spend differently? Where did they shop differently? How did they walk the store? Things like that. And we're going to dig into more of those kind of data cuts of looking at things like, does the millennial shopper shop differently and think differently above what I shared here than the boomer shopper or the Gen X shopper? How do households with kids shop? And what do they think about this experience? And is that different than households without kids? So there's a lot more to come. Um, I think we're really excited with what we're seeing. And, and I want to reinforce, I truly believe that the future is virtual as you think about elevating your online grocery experiences online. Thank you so much. Okay, Diana, that was really excellent. I learned quite a lot uh, about the topic and look forward to further development. We do have a couple of questions that came in. Uh, number one, what would shoppers want if they had the chance to shop virtually? I think what we, 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 we are finding is, is shoppers are actually still wanting something really simple, right? While we found that with the, um, with the really experiential um, breakfast store that was featured in, the, um, in, in kind of the farm yard, people liked that. But then they were also kind of, they came back and they said, but you know what, I'd also be fine just shopping in something that kind of looks like my grocery store today. Um, what we did see is shoppers aren't looking for something that recreates a full store, right? At a larger level, part of why people shop online is to save time. And so what, what we anticipate that they're going to want is they're going to want curated assortments, focused themes that really tie to, to particularly those occasions that are not that weekly normal shopping trip and, and, and are more those occasions that actually when searching online, um, it, it takes more time to shop. So again, this idea of a holiday focused store or a, a entertainment store when we know that there are big like kind of key times of the year when people entertain, something like that where you've got the key things that you want maybe 100 items, maybe 200 items in a specific kind of idea or concept. That's what they're looking for today. Okay, we have one more question. What are some obstacles to providing virtual commerce experiences for retailers? I, I think at a, at a larger level right now, one of the obstacles really is, is, is it's about kind of figuring out what the right experience is um, that, that's really going to appeal to shoppers. Uh, and then from there, it's, it's about really kind of driving awareness for shoppers that they have the ability to shop this way. Um, at, at the core of this is, is you know, we've seen for, for several years now retailers playing with this idea of virtual shopping. It really just becomes a, an element of kind of working within the system to reassure them that there are ways to execute this and elevate their experience without kind of with, without actually risking kind of the day-to-day -day sales that they get both online and in store. I think the other element is is in looking to virtual to elevate experiences for their shoppers and potentially even drive loyalty, making sure that you bring that kind of brand experience kind of idea, you carry it through to the virtual experiences that shoppers shop um, online. Okay, thank you. For more information about this topic, you can contact Diana Sheehan at InContextSolutions.com, as well as uh, calling her. Her phone number is on the screen. So thank you very much, Diana. That was really interesting. Thank you so much. <laughs>